In the dark of an academy library, a shining silverfish ponders some of life's greatest questions, like what is a tastier snack, the pages of War and Peace, or its bindings? A true scholar, the silverfish must test his hypothesis before making any definitive judgments. You and I don't have the stomach for such studies. But expanding your palate is a great way to experience life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of our theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, please search Cassie Michelle on YouTube or Spotify. And thank you to Johanna for the creation of this week's artwork. To check that out, you can follow us on Facebook or Twitter at LD Taxonomy or visit us at our home on the web at LDTaxonomy.com. And a very special thank you to our patrons, to Tristan Taylor, Jesse Raspolich, Carol Raspolich, and Richard Kaspar. Thank you so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks for helping us keep the lights on. And thanks for listening to our warm-up episodes. Yeah. We've monetized our real, our, our conversations again. We've monetized our conversations about Pokemon, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and today we're talking about a bookworm, literally, but also not literally. But more on that later. Definitely not literally. Well, but, yeah, we're talking about uh, the silverfish, which is also a misnomer. Yeah, yeah. At least, ha- at least halfway. Well, it's, um, it's the silver, silver the color, but not the mineral. Right. Um, this is one of those animals that, the one of the few animals that we we were doing, where the average person has probably encountered it. Mm-hmm. Like it's literally, not, it's, like seen it in in person yeah or killed one <laughs> like we, we we did the we did the 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 cockroach but that was the death's head cockroach it's not it's not like the your average like german cockroach that you see all over the place carpet beetle you might have encountered that without even knowing it yeah i i've i i couldn't tell you um like whether or not I've seen a carpet beetle. I mean, I'm sure they're around, but like I've never, I've never been like, oh look, a carpet beetle. Silverfish I saw yesterday, so um, it's very, very prevalent. Uh, but we're we're gonna call it here uh, the slippery attic boys. Um, book snacks. <laughs> it's funny I just mentioned <laughs> book snacks. Book snacks. Um, and moving buddies, moving buddies. Because whenever you move, these guys are here to support you. Mm-hmm. Or to eat the support out mm-hmm. from under you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you. Is it, it's time to, to taxonomize this captain. Okay. I mean, I could really go for some Captain Crunch, but there's like a dairy shortage in the area, and I went to two CVSs and I couldn't find any any milk. So um, I was I gonna might eat die. food. I was gonna get uh, DoorDash because we were. Uh, we had leftovers, but I was out of leftovers. I ate all my leftovers, and Johanna still had some. So I was going to get some DoorDash quickly before we uh, recorded, but everyone's not delivering because a uh, storm's coming. Do you guys have your own, like, food? You guys don't share? Well, we Do you guys usually... need, like, couples therapy or something? No, we usually share, but, like... I I've just never heard like a, like people in their I mean maybe maybe we're the the, the outliers but I, like the idea that you have your leftovers and Johanna has hers is like no oh because because we we got um, Pollo Tropical and uh, we both got larges and she saved hers but I ate mine meaning it wasn't it wasn't like leftovers from something we cooked it was leftovers from things we got from a, individually a specific yeah, a meal. okay okay yeah. that makes a little bit more sense it's like okay this is my casserole <laughs> this, <laughs> no. and that yeah, is your the, that's your like saran wrap plate of pancakes yeah dinner time don't touch is, dinner t- like cooking time is horrible because we're both trying to cook different things at the same time just kidding we don't do that well bibby and i don't like a lot of the same foods so it 
it, it, it kind of ends up just separating itself. <laughs> like I've got burgers and she's got like r- roasted vegetables or something like that. We do that a anyway. little bit. Whenever Johanna has a, la- a salad, I'm, uh, I'm not going to eat a salad. Like for dinner, I won't eat a salad. Yeah, that's what food eats. Yeah. I'll eat a sa- salad as a herald for food. I'll have. Same with soup. Uh, unless uh, it's a very hearty soup. S- s- I'll I'll have a soup. I'll have a like a yeah a, a chunky soup. She as Johanna dinner. makes a minestrone soup that is thick with solid objects, and I like that. That's good. Yeah, it's got to it's got to have a thick broth, and then there's got to be a lot of like f- actual food in there. Right. Um. But yes, I mean, salad is a harbinger for food. Mm-hmm. Is is fine, I guess. Sa- salad is the silver surfer to foods galactus. That's that's all it's, I'm, I'm allowing allowing in our house. <laughs> Dinner is galactus. <laughs> salad <laughs> is the silver surfer, the silverfish, the silverfish yeah. surfer, bringing it right back. All right, let's taxonomize this. Uh, the kingdom is one you know, love, and are in. Animalia. Just join 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 the kingdom, brother. Uh, the phylum is Arthropoda. So get out of that kingdom. Mm-hmm. Unless you're We're an Arthropoda. It's not um, Anthropoda. No, it's not it's not Anthropoda. It's not human hu- human feet. <laughs> people feet. Um the uh the class is Insecta. When I first saw this, I was like, oh look, it's like um it's like a woodlouse. Like I, I bet you this is gonna be a crustacean. But nope. It's uh it's an insect. Insecta. The order is Zyg- Zygentoma. Zygentoma. Uh, the family is L- Lepismatidae. Uh, the genus, genus is Lepisma. Hmm. And the species is Saccharinum. Lepisma ah. Saccharinum. I'll be surprised. No, you know what? All right, let's get right to it. Is there a... Collective noun, yes. Collective it's time for my okay. favorite part of the show. Critter groups. Part of the show where I ask you a joke question. And that question is the same every time. What is the name of the group of this animal? What is the term of venery? Or what is the collective noun? There is a... There is a... Uh, a collective noun for this one. But also, there... Uh, it would have been interesting to do nitty-gritty, nitty-gritty nomenclature. Because um, I was able to find the etymology for this. But I will save it in case something happens to this... <laughs> <laughs> this uh, um, footage and I have I need to redo the quiz so if you saw a group of silverfish which is uh, likely if you've ever moved the box from an attic that you haven't touched in a while um, would you say that's a a nest of silverfish B a scrabble of silverfish C a school of silverfish or D a swarm of silverfish a school of silverfish final answer. Really? Wow, that was fast. Uh, incorrect. Dang, I see, that would have been so fun. I didn't make the buzzer noise. I almost did, but like, I have to, I, I'm beginning to regain some of my self-respect. Um, <laughs> and your autonomy. And, my, <laughs> and I'm, my own, I'm my own man. Um, yeah, it's a swarm. It's a swarm of silverfish. That's not but as fun. I would have no, loved it for it to be a school. A school of silverfish because a it's fish even though this isn't a fish and b they eat books <laughs> yeah 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 or there's, uh, like an there's academy. school's worst oh, enemy an academy of silverfish would have been great <laughs> the academy of silver lucario <laughs> um yeah it's a swarm Fair enough. Not a school of, of silverfish. Would you like to hear what this looks like? Sure. If you okay, so if you're imagining a wait, fish, wait. Do you want me to tell you the size and dimensions? Oh wait, no, 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 never. I'm, We're not I'm there yet. You, see, Slow you didn't make the buzzer sound. Your roll. So you've undone all of our uh, all. We all have the yips now. You undid <laughs> all of the muscle memory. I've. <laughs> I've uh, I've thrown a wrench into uh, I've I've you've, you're missing audio cues that that have 
that you're programmed to respond yeah. to. My Pavlovian um, response is gone. Yeah, so like after you hear the buzzer sound out of my mouth, you have like like a, an internal timer that that tells you <laughs> when measure up is about to happen. Yes. And so now now everything is cattywampus. Yeah. Anyway, um, just calm down for for a second, okay? I'll try. Uh, about about the measure up, okay. we can we'll we'll get to that. All right. Um. So. Silverfish. If you are imagining a fish, um, don't, because you're wrong. Uh, it doesn't look like a fish. Uh, actually, I, the, like again, I, th I thought that it was a crustacean. Um, it it kind of looks like zooplankton. When you when it's it's got the silhouette of zooplankton. This long silver segmented body with six little lobster legs sticking out the top half. Um, juveniles are white, but they eventually, they gain their silver um, coating as they age, just like, just like we do. <laughs> um, they have uh, two long antenna that jut out from their heads and three long, I mean, I, Cersei, I think that's what it's, how you... <laughs> how you uh, pronounce it uh, C-E-R-C-I Cersei um, which is butt antenna <laughs> it's jut, jut, juts out from their silver bums um, but um, again s sensory organs Cersei is a good like that. that's a like uh, if you imagine an earwig those clamps on the back those are Cersei it's like any any appendage that sticks out from the bottom of the abdomen mm -hmm. um, on a bug or on an insect. Um, sometimes it's used for defense, sometimes it's used for mating, and sometimes it's used as a sensory organ. And in the silverfish's case, it's more sensory organs. Um, they have two small compound eyes, but they do not use them very much. They mostly navigate using their antenna and their butt antenna. Um, and okay, so now, now you can tell us how long this boy is. Okay. Welcome to the Blood Measure Up segment, the official listener's favorite part of the show, the part of the show that's uh, present that when we present my my my, my yips, I got the, uh, the Go, part of the show. Do you need to take a nap? <laughs> when we present the animal size and dimensions in relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the whole family. It's also part of the show that's introduced by you. When you send an audio yourself saying singing or chittering the words measure up into LD taxonomy at gmail.com. We don't have a new measure up intro this week because you all don't care about us. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to just use guilt at this point. My heart to, uh, is absolutely broken. If, if we could just have more people sending us measure ups than people sending us proposals to redo the website or do some marketing or do some social you're marketing. you're really hung up on these uh on these email blasts <laughs> uh well because it they it, it makes my heart a flutter every time i see somebody like hector sent an email oh what did hector say did he send an email? no he he's he's asking for the appropriate person to to who handles the marketing at ldtaxonomy.com well, then we are the appropriate people. Huh? Yeah, because but, we're the only people. Um, but we're not interested. So, Hector, if you're out there, send a measure up, please. Send, they send, send a measure up, please. But yes, my heart is broken. My my heart's like a stallion. People love it more when it's broken. Without further ado, the listener's favorite part of the show. Do you remember who that is? Is that Barrel Chested Thomas? No. Oh. Is that me? No. <laughs> close. It's close yeah. to me? Yes. Extremely. There's nobody close to me. Is it 50 more? 50% you. Oh, it's my dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. 
He'll be here in a few days. <laughs> so he'll, right he will be physically before. close, not just biologically. <laughs> That's why it sounded like me. Measure <laughs> up. <laughs> It was very it was, well. It was very melodic. Yeah, he needs some bongos in the background because he loves the bongos. <laughs> All right, the congos actually, both. He's good at both. Uh, let's talk about length. Um, they're between thirteen and twenty-five millimeters, or zero point five to one inch. An inch, isn't that nice? That is nice. So how many silverfish go into the longest single volume book in terms of thickness? The longest? It's the thickest, technically. Okay. But if you get thick enough, you become long again. I don't because like they fit a lot of words on each one of those like super thin leaf Bible pages. Yeah, this if was you, if, this theme. If you to printed be the Bible out on like like it was a Stephen King novel, it would be massive. This seems like they were face. going for distance. They were going for speed. Um, here's a hint. The book is the manga One Piece, which I think, without knowing anything about it, is the story of a stretchy pirate that wears a gardening hat. Um, the book is yep. apparently <laughs> impossible to read. And it it's 21,450 pages long. It's longer than the Bible in terms of pages. Yeah, but it's mostly pictures, right? Yeah, probably not in terms of text. Mostly pictures of some guy who has like a sword in his mouth and somehow that's effective. <laughs> Is that? Yeah, I don't know. Stretch Armstrong I, with a... Uh, it looks like a Pokemon I see a picture gardener. of it. Yeah, any, any, <laughs> anytime. Yeah, he looks like he's about to uh, like send a Rosalia at me. Um Anytime I see a picture of it, it's Stretch Man, it's Ginger Girl, and it's I've got a sword, I've got three swords, and one of them's in my mouth, guy. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. Uh, I wouldn't be able to tell you anything else about it besides the one stretchy guy. <laughs> no, whenever I think about it, it's, I think of just like there's one Punch Man, and then there's One Piece. So it's like One Piece, One Piece Man, One Piece Man. Um, but he, but he doesn't care that much about peace or maybe he does. I don't know anything about it. Maybe he's a pacifist, pacifist pirate with mm -hmm. a, with a straw hat. This is, this is, this is stretchy Tom Sawyer. Yeah. S stretchy Sawyer, stretch mm -hmm. Sawyer. Um, <sighs> I mean, I'm just picturing this, this book that just can't can't be opened um reasonably <laughs> uh without the whole thing just falling over onto itself 20,000 pages fully they illustrated keep, i can't what a dumb saying, idea they can't well it's like a it's an art break thing. that up <laughs> it's an art piece it's like more People, the articles were saying it's more of a sculpture than a book since it's physically impossible to read. So the, yeah, the I spine know. must be the rigid so that you can't bend it even if you wanted to. Or if it's, even if it's really not rigid, it's like if 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 it's I mean if it's like th four feet tall, which is probably going to be my guess. You try to open it and the whole thing just bends down. So you could read it, you but could, you, you're just going to have this big floppy it. mess on your hands. You could read it on a table. But they, they were saying it's impossible to read. So it must have a rigid spine. Made of like steel or something. It's impossible to read. You literally cannot open it. There might be nothing in there. It might just be 20,000 blank pages. Yeah. And you have no way of knowing because it's unopenable. Um, that's what I would do if I wanted to get a record. I'm just like... Yeah, look, it's look, it's the, it's the tallest book in the world. It's like, what is it? I, I'm, I'm some sort of manga. It doesn't matter. There's nothing on it. Uh, <laughs> I, it's 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 the it's the Bible eighteen times. Like they should have made the art fill in the blank. The, they should have made the art on the spine. The man stretching because it's lo you know long, but they didn't. 
that's that's too much foresight for for anime um oh yeah i'm gonna go with four feet um which is 48 inches which is 48 silverfish final answer Done. am i am i dumb no that's right yeah 48 silverfish. yeah that's right um let's take this moment to re- remind you that since we didn't get a new measure up intro we didn't get uh carlos doesn't have five percent added to his score towards a nursing school victory which is which means 80% i need it or better 80 mm-hmm. percent. so the correct answer is 31.5 silverfish is that the book is 31.5 nope which is long what was it what's the percentage 65 percent yeah rounding up gross that's just i mean that's a i thought about going like a yard just doing that and then mm-hmm. I, that would have been a victory but i was like ah uh, that's let's let's add that extra foot on there make things interesting because i feel like i've seen a like a ridiculous looking book that was about a, like several feet tall so i thought we did the thickest book before and it definitely wasn't one piece Maybe this is new. Anyway, let's talk about the size of their eggs. Because we, normally we, we would do weight, but uh, it's little. So it's not a lot of weight. So let's... The the size of their egg, their oval-shaped eggs, is about uh, 0.8 millimeters or 0.031 inches. So... How many silverfish eggs go into the size of a human egg? 0.031 inches. Not 0.31. It's not a third of its body length. Right? 0.031. So here's a hint. Human eggs, human female eggs, uh, they're tiny. Um uh, w- w- and this is crazy. Women are born with one million eggs, and only about three hundred thousand remain when they reach puberty. And then only about three hundred to four hundred will be ovulated. Percentage-wise, that's crazy. Yeah, you're literally they're given a number a number of eggs in order to lose most of them. And then you run out. Mm-hmm. And then you're done. And then you don't. That, and that's why women and children first. And that's Because they have that. a limited number of eggs. Uh, chances, yeah. Maybe the... I, I can't imagine it is... A, a human egg is visible to the naked eye. Because it is one cell. <laughs> um, what was your... Is it... How many... What was the question? Frame the question again. Silverfish eggs are smaller. Okay. What? The female egg cell is bigger than you think. Most cells aren't visible to the naked eye. You need a microscope to see them. The human egg cell is an exception it's actually the biggest cell in the body and can be seen without a microscope. I got some bad intel. Let me just give you this information. The, the, the silverfish egg is bigger. That's what I thought. Do you want to change your answer at all with this information? Oh, the, the, hum, the human egg is smaller? Yes. Um, yeah, I guess. Because point zero three, yeah, uh, that seems pretty noticeable. Um, I'll go with a hundred. A hundred. A hundred human eggs. Mm-hmm. I'm not even. Let's, there's not even a math buffer there. It's just me guessing how many <laughs> go into one or the other. Then let me tell you. Let me be the first to say. You got exactly a nursing school victory. Because the, the answer, answer is 80. Is 80. 
Although you'd have to do twenty percent off. Yeah, twenty percent off. Yeah, you did it. Yeah, it's like it's like a sale. <laughs> it's twenty percent off. Black Friday. Nice. It's been a while since I've had a victory. I think. I need one because this house is crushing my soul. One hundred microns. Okay, you got any fast facts before we go into the major fact? I do. That was a uh, so, your new house of uh, measure up question. Like it should have been really simple, but it ended up being insanely <laughs> difficult and costing sixteen thousand dollars. <laughs> yes, it's costing me so much money. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. And and it's uh, damaging your credit and uh, your relationship with God. <laughs> I hope not that. <laughs> um, and just, apparently your relationship I mean, with dog, because your dog's trying to get the heck out. Because right? my dog escaped, my kids are gone. Like <laughs> I'm so lonely. <laughs> Hurricanes bearing down on you. You're right. You are Lieutenant Dan in the storm right now. <laughs> <clears throat> Um. All right. So, silverfish. I will smile at the storm. Smile at the storm. Smile at the storm. I don't know that song, but I do know "Stand in the Rain" by Super Chick. So, which is it sounds like the same thing. (laughs) Um. Fair enough. So, silverfish live uh, pretty much everywhere as long as it's moist. Um, especially in all, pretty much all human habitation. (laughs) My weather app on the bottom screen keeps going from like, oh, it's a balmy, like 61 degrees and, uh, partially cloudy to To hurricane. hurricane. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, oh, oh, okay. Is the hurricane now? (laughs) But it wasn't before. Now it is. Every once in a while it becomes hurricane. Every, every once in a while, there is a hurricane, but then at, on, on the other times, it's balmy. Um, oh, yeah. So pretty much everywhere there are, uh, are people living in domiciles, there are silverfish. Um, they can live for up to three years, which I was surprised by because... Uh, that's that's a relatively long time for an insect. I mean, when you compare it to like a cicada, it's, oh, it's obviously not a very long time. But um, I just feel like the average insect doesn't doesn't live for more than like six months or a year or something like that. Um, or if you took that the the average lifespan of all insects, it would be probably sub one year. So this is this is impressive. Um, they can regenerate their antenna and their butt antenna, their cerci, um, and in just a few weeks if they are lost, broken, or devoured for some reason. It's more than I can say. Yeah, it takes me much longer antenna. to regenerate my antenna than than a yeah. than a silverfish. And a, a lifetime of trying to no avail. Yeah. It's actually really, it's really discouraging <laughs> when I compare myself to, don't compare yourself to a silverfish when it comes to regenerating your antenna. It's, it's unrealistic standards of antenna regeneration that society has pushed on us. When did this become more attractive than this? <laughs> and it's, it's, it's a silverfish with like one antenna and one with two, <laughs> one that's half growing out. Or just a person. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, that's all I got. Those are, all, those are all the fast facts. I'm not going to talk about. I think you've got food facts. Mm-hmm. Food for thought. Food, the nutrition facts. Yeah. I'm calling this a major fact. Real bookworms. So they're called bookworms. The, the term bookworm comes from these boys. I'm pretty sure. Really? Yeah. They're not this worms. This is what is considered a bookworm? I think there are numbers, number of species, spices, that, um, that, do things, do bad things to books. 
spicy uh, species that do bad things to books. That yeah, sounds like yeah. an ACDC song. <laughs> <laughs> like, like dirty deeds that are done d- dirt cheap and spicy species that do bad things to books. <laughs> uh, like, yeah. like Nazis. One and, of them is this. Yeah, and not, silverfish. Nazis, silverfish, carpet beetles, you know, the like. So yeah. we talk about so the, spicy. Carpet be- the carpet beetle that can eat keratin. But the silverfish is another household pest with a strange addiction. So silverfish have the ability to digest something called cellulose. You know, are you familiar with cellulose? Mm, I am, yeah. Iridocyclitis. Cellulose is a substance found in plant fibers. It's uh, what cell walls are made of. And it's what makes raw plants more difficult to digest for many mammals. So uh, I'm pretty sure if you get bubble gut after eating some broccoli, it's because of cellulose. Or maybe just uh, gaseous. Um, true, true. When you or I or the dog eats cellulose in the form of a vegetable, most of it gets expelled from your body like it was caught doing something uh, that uh, caught going along with uh, one of Ron or Harry's clever ideas. Or worse, expelled. Yeah. like From the body. <laughs> like cellulose. Um Silverfish produce something called cellulase. Cellulase? And it's spelled like cellulose, only there's an A. Or there's a, yeah, A instead of an O at the end. So is it like vegetable mayonnaise? Cellulase? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's some, well, since mayonnaise makes burgers more palatable. I mean, I've been so too I'm so hungry. Cellulase. <laughs> Cellulase is an enzyme that can break down cellulose into simple sugars that can be fermented through digestion. So most animals don't produce cellulase, especially mammals, unless they're built to eat fibrous plants like cows. So ruminants produce their own cellulase. Um, But we don't. So... The ability of the silverfish to eat cellulose means that it might be attracted to all kinds of household products that contain the substance. They also eat, so cellulose Cellulose is a polysaccharide, which an other polysaccharides include starches and dextrin. And dextrin is, in, is found in a ton of different adhesives. So their ability to eat strange things. No, dextrin. D E X T R I N. Got it. Um, their ability to eat strain these strange uh, polysaccharides may mean you'll find them going after your books, which means they go after not just the paper, but also the binding, the glue that binds the pages together. Um, carpet, clothes, coffee. Coffee and like the glue on the binding, I'm munching on it. Yeah. Uh, coffee not only is, um, you know, plant fiber, but it's also treated with cellulase. Did you know that? Like uh, Co- coffee that you that you buy is sometimes treated with cellulase to make it uh, easy, more easily broken down. Huh. Did not know So that. when you run hot water over it... Um, it, I guess that help. I don't know that the it it breaks it down so that it makes a richer coffee. That's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. Um, like <laughs> this is your story. <laughs> uh, they also eat your dandruff, so that's at least one good thing. They're Ooh, doing. Some, I need to go uh, get myself some silverfish and just keep them in my hair. Yeah, they'll, they'll <laughs> well they'll also eat your hair, so that's mm. not good. No, they'll, they that also is not just, good. Straight up enjoy glue like a kindergartner um, and paint like a kindergartner um, and family photos. They'll eat that um, and they'll eat plaster. So they'll eat not just the um, the carpets and the drapes, but also the the drywall in between. Um, so they're just going to they, they will they will bring your house to the studs. Yeah, talk about eating you out of house and home. Mm, they are teenagers. 
<laughs> uh, they particularly enjoy wallpaper since wallpaper is just paper that's soaked in paste. That sounds I, like, yeah, that's that, that's like uh, fried chicken <laughs> dipped in Chick-fil-A sauce. I was going to say, it's like, it's like uh, what fried the, what's that fun. candy that you dip in sugar? Oh, the fun, fun dip? Fun dip, yeah. No, fun because dip. the fun, the, the, the candy itself is like not that great. It's only really great when you dip it in the sugar. But I'm talking about something that is delicious on its own, like fried chicken, and then you just dip it in something that's just that just sends it over the moon, a like Chick Fil A sauce. Covered Oreo. There you go. Yep. <laughs> uh, I bet yep. if you you brought, I bet they would enjoy paper mache. That sounds like it would. Be oh delicious. yeah, that sounds like right up their alley. Uh, they don't love leather, but they will eat it if it's all you have, and they won't complain about it. So don't worry. Um, that's that must be concerning for cows. It's like, oh, it's just gonna eat my skin and hair. Um, yeah. If uh, if you're thi- if you're thinking uh, I'm safe because I only use synthetic materials in my house, they have also been known to eat fully synthetic fabric, which is doesn't sound as delicious. It's like uh, Beyond Beef. <laughs> it's uh. Oh, what a, it's it's an it's impo, it, uh, impossible fabric. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, if you decide to starve them out by replacing everything in your house with stone and living in a dungeon uh, and other non-edible things, they will live for a, a full year um, as long as they have water. A third of their lifespan they could live without water without food. That's crazy. Yeah, and then the and then as soon as you bring in a single piece of parchment they're good for another year as soon as you shed some <laughs> dandruff some dandruff yeah as soon as uh, you cut your hair in that dungeon you're you'll, you'll feast for a week <laughs> um but it turns out in this fight your your allies are spiders Spiders are common in households, and uh, they are common silverfish predators. And it turns out spiders leave your goods and textiles alone. In fact, spiders make silk, so technically they leave your home with more fibers than they found. Yeah, like (laughs) you you might have like a silk shirt, but then suddenly there's a pocket sewn on it. That's because (laughs) of spiders. (laughs) A spider pocket. (laughs) It just adds it adds like new uh, addendums and features to your existing silks. Charlotte went to uh, went to trade school. Went to tailoring school. Yeah. <laughs> that's now now that's a helpful a helpful animal. Yeah. Anyway, that's all I got. Keep your spiders alive, unless mm-hmm. you know for sure that they're deadly. One of the ones that it said like was a an like loved to eat um, silverfish didn't look like the kind you want in your house. It looked like a big scary kind. I wish Daddy Longlegs ate more things, but they're so small. Because Daddy Longlegs it can stay. Yeah, for some reason they're not as creepy, even though they really should be because. Uh, I guess girth. Mm-hmm. Girth is worse than legginess when yeah. it comes to spiders. Mm-hmm. So they're not really intimidating because they're just like w- one point. And they're not also, even spiders. The way they move is so haphazard. They're a, a snowflake of uh, walking around. They seem... Yeah, well, they're like a dust mite. Yeah. That's being blown by like they a, do. They an idle like breeze. That. We used to have uh, Daddy Longlegs fights in in our in when we would go um, stay in the Boy Scout cabins in North Carolina because there were just Daddy Longlegs all over the place inside these cabins and we would just scoop them up and chuck them at each other. Were they grumpy at each other or did they just kind of like walk around each other? They were. They didn't care. They couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> no, I mean, oh, oh, the, you would have. <laughs> 
Excuse me. I oh. thought you had a ring. <laughs> we, we were, we, it was like a, like a cockfighting like ring. Popsicle. Yeah, like a popsicle stick <laughs> ring that you like, put in the We, 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 we just like, we just to. dig a hole in the ground and put, put them in there like beta fish and you bet. Meant you would throw like a snowball fight. Yeah, we would, like I said, we'd, we'd scoop up a daddy long legs and chuck them at each other. <laughs> I don't think they would even make, the, it's like throwing a piece of fuzz. It would just like, all instant, like, air wall. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, 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 they made some distance. And so you'd just be like sitting there talking to someone or, or trying to go to sleep. And then suddenly you just feel this slight pip on your cheek or something like that is because somebody <laughs> just chucked a harvest man at your at your face <laughs> and they're the they're, those are like the the slightly bigger ones the the red ones with the mm -hmm. the jet black legs so they're they're a little easier to to find than your average daddy long legs but father lanky limbs large large father lanky limbs mm -hmm. um yeah. I wish they ate more things too because I'm not a fan of like golden orb spiders being in my house. <laughs> yeah. Stop. Don't want this. <laughs> I don't want this like playing card sized monstrosity <laughs> sitting there no matter how benign it is or helpful it is. I I'm not afraid of uh <laughs> crab spiders, but I also don't want them in my house cuz they love to just like put put webs in your face they put them across paths and they build them in like 30 minutes yeah they and i i feel like they take like a plumb line and measure how tall you are before they make their web <laughs> so that it, so that it hits yeah, you in the face they do do that yeah they're like ah, what, is, what, what is what is joseph over there is this is what about like five five eight five nine that's a good place to make my web <laughs> I'd like to eat, but if I can not, if I don't, if I don't get food today, I would like a fun prank. <laughs> I, w I would like to saran wrap Joey in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to make him do a little funny dance in the morning when he goes out and takes the trash out. And it take the, I mean, I'll just make another web. It's not a big deal, but like, it'll take me like check 10, this, 20 minutes. Yeah. Check this out. They probably like, yeah, el elbow each other. Like, look, he's coming outside again. He's going to take out this. Got him. Got him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Never gets old. Ever tell you about the time that I went into, um, this reminds me of the, uh, I, I was working at the Minnesota State Fair in St. Paul and um, there are no, Cats in the area know. that we were in, there were, there were no um, like physical, like brick and mortar bathrooms. So they had porta porta johns out in the back and um, there were, there are these bleachers for this dog show and that wasn't happening right then, but there were a couple people sitting on the bleachers um, kind of watching this, this one Porta John and I really had to go. And so I started walking toward it and they started like to laugh, like to giggle. And I didn't really think too much about it. I thought they were just talking, you know, talking to themselves or whatever. But I, I opened this Porta John and it's like that scene. And I think it's uh like daddy daycare or whatever with El uh, Eddie Murphy, where he's just like, making this face and looking at the ground like oh oh and then he looks on the walls he looks at the ceiling and he's like oh <laughs> he's just repulsed that that was that was it like there um a a left for dead two boomer full of poop exploded inside of that um that porta john i don't know how it's possible to get it on the ceiling unless you paint it you paint it or something like that it was so nasty and it smelled so bad and i was like oh and i left and the people on the bleachers just like fell over laughing <laughs> up until you said the word poop i thought this story was going to be about how you went into a, a a porta potty and there was a big old spider in it ah uh, yeah well, what that... did this have to do with a spider because I was, we were painting the picture where a couple of spiders are like sitting there waiting for 
you to walk into something gross. Oh, the gross. people were the spiders. The, spe- the people in this situation <laughs> were the spiders. They were just sitting there enjoying watching people walk into that porta john and <laughs> laughing at it. <laughs> I was so... The, the, the transition slides were lost <laughs> in my mind. I, I imagine... That I, I should have... Well, I, I mean... And yeah, it's. I guess it would be totally not unreasonable to open a porta john and find it full of spiders. I was thinking that's my nightmare to be like to sit down and then be like, "Oh my gosh, there's a." F- I didn't notice before, but there's a golden orb weaver in the corner here. I would be so totally fine if it was just in the corner of a porta john, if it was a golden orb, because I know it's not going anywhere. If I got in there and there was like a a wandering thing. Like a, a Brazilian wandering spider or whatever, like one of like a a a, a, ro- a roaming hunter that moved around. Um, no thanks. But if it's if it's up there in its web, I, as long as I don't yeah, bother it, it's not going to bother me. The embarrassment of uh, going in the bathroom and somebody's already in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So what would you rather do if you if you absolutely had if there was no choice but to go to the bathroom in a porta john and it whether if if it was fl- tip to toe floor to ceiling covered in poop or floor to s- floor to ceiling covered in spiders what spider just uh we'll call it a go- gold golden orb spider like let's say there's 20 spiders in there all they've all made their nests in every corner and above you and behind you and in the like the the hinge of the door and everything the the um golden orb weavers can hurt when they bite but the the record for the most number of spiders on a person was set with golden orb weavers because really? I, I feel like you could get a lot more smaller spiders on you. Well, I guess this type of spider is is just like... Well, the, the person Chill. was lay, laying down in a... Uh, usually this is done with tarantulas. Uh, but you're just... They're laying down in like a, a base... Like a bathtub type situation. And it's poured in... Poured onto them. Oh, boy. So I guess... That's- I would like to say that it would be spider, but man, it would take a lot of mental fortitude to be like, I know I probably won't get bit, but just to like walk into an enclosed space, just walking through thousands of webs and spiders. I don't think I would, my my mind would. I, in fact, at a certain point, I think the poop is more dangerous because of disease. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, like, just like for, for that to have happened, there has to have been a disease. That's cholera. Yeah, or, That's a cholera some, room. Some sort of tra- tragedy. Um, yeah, I mean, if you could, if I could, definitely avoid getting either th- either substance on me, like like it wasn't on the seat or something, um, and I just had to go to the bathroom with it all around me. I think I'd take the spiders. I most yeah. definitely take the spiders. Every, I, I would think every rather. Time. I don't know. Would you rather have like a dozen necrotic bites, or cholera? Of uh, from a spider, like I don't no, know. No, from the not, other. From like, the Brazilian from, wandering spider. No, 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 cholera from the, the poopa potty. No, no, the necrotic bites. Yes, necro nec- like, uh, like a. Uh, a necrotic bite from the orb. spider is not gonna be death. No, but it's it not doesn't. deadly. Maybe. But I don't think. But with medical interventions, I don't think cholera would be deadly either. Nowadays, I don't know about that. Anyway, this is a dark uh, <laughs> end to the episode. Yeah, it's it's funny how things. I end up wrapping up with spiders. (laughs) Literally.
but they are they are they, they it's it's they're they're so repulsive to so many people and yet they're they're like one of the most helpful little guys yeah a lot of like time. there was there was there we have these like little i don't remember what they're called but um these web building spiders with a with an orange stripe under them um they're about the size of a a dime um and uh one built a nest between my like the lamp right outside of my sliding glass door and the grill right next to me and so every time i walked out like there was this big spider web right next to my, right next to me and like everything in me wanted to rip it down and kill the spider but i was like this thing is stopping mosquitoes from getting in my house because it's really? right there next to the door it's a great spot yeah yeah, this is, and, and it's not in the way. It's just there, but it's like, uh, it's just spider web right there next to my <laughs> Every time I open the door, it's just... And I'm not, like, arachnophobic. It's just, like, I don't, I don't want this living thing the building. It's, yeah. it's, yeah, heebie-jeebie nest right next to me. Um, but, yeah. Anyway. That's the silverfish. <laughs> So for you out there in podcasting, regenerate your Cersei, stay out of the light, and feed your brain and belly with books like the silverfish here in life, death, and taxonomy. Hey Taxonomy Titans, I just want to remind you that we now have a Patreon. Patrons can see full video episodes and get shoutouts on the show. But ultimately, it's a way for you to help us cover some costs and get even better. Still, reviews are the best way to help us grow. So if you haven't left one yet, we'd really love to hear from you. As always, thanks for listening and engaging. podcast <laughs> there are books and light a plenty